Hello guys, welcome. I'm Alyssa. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is going to be a fun one. I have some new plants beside me and we're going to repot them. I feel like I haven't done a fun repotting in a little bit. I think my last technically repotting that I did was when I chopped my Marble Queen or my Varicosum. That's been, I think, a couple weeks. I've been doing some other videos besides repotting, but now I'm ready to get back into the repotting. But I just wanna quickly show you the three that we're working with. This one here is hilarious because of the way that it's growing right now. You're not gonna be able to make it out until I like show you up close. Uh, this is a string of dolphins. I have been looking for a string of dolphins forever, and I finally found one at Lowe's. It was like one of my last shopping places I went to, it was like number five store. And I wasn't gonna run in there, but I did. And I found this guy and I was so happy. It was $7.98 or something like that. It wasn't too expensive. And I'm really excited to have a dolphin. The only thing is, is it's kind of etoliated or stretched out, which means the space between the leaves, like the inner node part gets long because it's like having to reach to stretch to that light source and that's what this guy has done. The next one is my philodendron ring of fire. This is one that I got from Herb Creek. It's a garden center around here and this one was $49.99 and again this is one that I wasn't planning on repotting right away but I have now watered this three times in a span of just a few weeks, which I feel like is quite a bit because it's not even getting a lot of light in the spot that it's at. It's trying to push a new leaf and you can tell it's wanting to get stuck. So that tells me again, I've let it get too dry. It's not getting enough light. So I want to get this guy repotted into a, like, a pretty aerated mix. And this one is like a marbled pink princess and it's pretty sad right now. I've only watered it once, but it's in that Costa Farms, like cocoa peat, cocoa core, whatever the soil substrate is. I think it's cocoa core that they use. It's not getting enough light. And there's some sad leaves. There's a new leaf that grew all green that I'm going to cut off. Pink princesses, I feel like are more susceptible to root rot. I feel like their root system is a little bit finer and more delicate. So I want to use an aerated mix and I want to actually pull this plant again with a thickly pull. I have my white knight that I got from Costa at Lowe's on a thickly pull and it's taken to it extremely well and there's a ton of roots inside. So I want to do the same thing for this one. There is two separate plants in here but I'm going to keep them together and pull them up like side by side so that I can have a more full plant climbing. But yeah, that is the plan with these three. So I'm excited. And now I'm going to figure out which one I wanna do first. I feel like since I'm gonna do poles, I would kind of rather make the poles and do that together so we can knock those out kind of side by side in a way. So let's do the dolphins first and get that out of the way. And yeah, I'm super excited to get these all potted up and onto their next little growing phase. When I get new plants, sometimes I tend to sit and forget them, which means I don't fertilize them because I use slow release. So they're not really getting nutrients. And I know some soils have like the slow release pellets in there, but I prefer to add my own Osmocote. And I've already cleaned these. I've like cleaned them with a solution of, um, I just had a brain fart. What is the soap I use? Castile soap. <laughs> I've cleaned them with a solution of Castile soap, so I'm not concerned that there's anything pest-wise hanging out on the actual plant leaves. I know this is a really long intro, uh, so bear with me. When I do repottings, I tend to get rid of most, if not all, of the soil that the plant came in. I like to have like a fresh go, but these have been acclimating for several weeks now, maybe even closer to a month since I did that shopping video. Uh, so yeah, they have adjusted to my environment. I do have a new leaf coming in on the ring of fire, but it's very slow. I'm going to go ahead and repot it. I hope it doesn't get too affected. Sometimes I try to avoid re repotting a plant when a new leaf is pushing out because I don't want to jeopardize the new growth. But again, I feel like I'm doing this plant a dis service because it keeps drying out, which is causing like underwatering stress, which I feel like 
repotting it would be more beneficial than letting it keep getting underwatered. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna grab my supplies, move you a little bit closer, and we'll get started with our dolphins first. I didn't really feel like filming in my plant room today because I had just like cleaned in there. It's the weekend today and um, yesterday I had taken a lot of time to like dust shelves and clean because I did my moss pole area really good uh, when I filmed that video a week ago and I didn't get to do my other shelves yet so I wanted to like dust them and everything so I'm like when it's really clean in there I hate to mess it up you know. So I'm just gonna film out here and try not to make a mess. Just picking off some dried dolphin strands. I think I only watered this succulent one time since I've had it, but you, you can see it's, it's like severely compacted. It lifted right out of there. Now for plants like this that have a very thin root system, I break it up a little bit, but I'm not going to get rid of all of this soil because I feel like it would stress it out if I try and remove every single little piece. I just feel like pests are attracted to like dead plant debris and everything. So I just like to clean them up because it one, it makes it more aesthetically pleasing, which I like. And you know, there's pests that can hide in the little crevices. Do you see the shape of the dolphins? Aren't they cute? I just think that dolphins are so stinking cute. Again, like I've always wanted a dolphin, so I'm so lucky I found it. I'm gonna loosen some of this top bit of soil. It's still kind of damp in the middle. You don't really want to do too deep of a pot for these guys because uh, they're they they spread their roots more on like the surface. You know, they can grow down, but if you have a shallow pot, uh, it'll be easier to water too. That way there's not so much just soil underneath the root system, you know. I let my string of plants get all the way dry and then I'll water. And then it also depends, you know, on light levels too, because if they're getting a lot of light, it's going to help dry the soil out more and then you may need to water more often. But if you have these not getting a lot of light, then you definitely don't have to water as frequently. All right, I just wanted to do a little loose in here. Nothing crazy. See, a very shallow root system. Now, the pot that I am choosing to use is one of these pots that I got over a year ago. One of these uh, terracottas. I always get asked about these pots whenever I use them. This is one that I had used. I think I probably had my turtles in here or my string of pearls that I took out. I have like five of these. So uh, this is one that I had previously used and I washed out. So I'm gonna reuse it for this one. This is a pretty shallow pot. It is terracotta. Uh, it's gonna be a little overwhelming for this plant cause there's gonna be a lot more soil than roots. And that's when your mix comes into play with this. You want something that's gonna be pretty aerated. And so the mix that I'm gonna use for this one is gonna be my new mix that I haven't shared with you guys cause I'm still testing it out. But I feel like I would rather use that than my normal chunky mix. I feel like, I feel like this plant would do really well in it. Once I get used to this mix a bit more and my plants seem to do well with it, I will share more about this cause I'm hoping to eventually phase out Fox Farm. Uh, just because I'm not a fan really of peat moss anymore. You can kind of see it more there, how aerated it is. So we are gonna pull up. It has a plug that I can undo from the bottom so it does have a drainage hole. You're gonna do a layer on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and add some fertilizer. Make 
mix that in. And let's see where the plant is going to fit. Oh, it looks so cute with a terracotta, even though it looks a little wild right now. And the one that kind of fell off, I'm going to like stick him down in the soil on top. But I'm just going to center just like that and we will fill up around. I think one of you guys told me that have these pots to be careful how full you fill these because this little wick string can get dirty, I guess, if it gets saturated with too much water, if it's like down in, in the soil. So I'm trying not to fill it too full. I hope Target brings back a pot like this for next season. I know we're like heading into fall here, it's September already, but I'm already like looking forward to the spring. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I feel like Target's uh, spring stuff didn't really hit this year. I don't know. I wasn't super impressed with the selection. I didn't, I feel like I got a turtle pot and uh, that was pretty much it. I was actually at Target earlier getting some storage like organization stuff for my desk because I have two little drawers that pull out and I threw everything in there and it was driving me crazy and I found some cute notebooks as well from Target and they're freaking adorable I'll have to show you of course they're like plant notebooks so this little one just like a Finding like a bottom node, I'm just going to stick it right down in there. Kind of burying it. It should eventually root. So what's probably going to happen is these thin strands, once it starts receiving more light and it starts getting the nutrients, it'll uh, probably grow some thicker vines. Uh, honestly, what I should do is just cut these off to prop them, but I'll see how it grows. I'm gonna leave them for now, but I can always just like, if it looks silly, if some like thicker strands start growing in, I'll just like snip those off. But it's gonna be so cute having dolphins trail down my window. I think it's so cute. I'm glad I just got the one. I was gonna get two, but it'll fill out this pot in some time. I'm gonna add a few drops into, I have my watering can here. Now, I'm not going to saturate this entire plant because you guys saw the root system. It's very thin and delicate, and I don't want the soil sitting wet for an extended period of time. So what I'm going to do is just water where I planted this guy in not a lot of water. We're just going to do a slight water down the middle. Just like that. And that is all we're going to water. I won't have to water this plant for probably a week and a half, 10 days or so. I'm just going to let the roots settle into the pot and it to kind of adjust to being in my plant room. And that is it. This is so stinking cute. Look at that. Is it focusing? <laughs> it's so cute. I can't wait to hang this up. I'm going to love it. Yes, very happy with this. I'm excited. I can't wait to see it grow now. I am going to get my moss. I have a bin of moss that I saved uh, with some props. I didn't sanitize it or anything, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just gonna wet it and um, I'll start building my thickly poles. I'm probably just gonna do a medium for these ones since I have some of the newer 3.0 oaks. I think I had like 10 total and I've used maybe five of them. So I think I'll do the medium 3.0 for both of these. I think I will use a six inch for the pink princess and a five inch for the ring of fire. 
but we'll see. I'll grab a few sizes. We'll start building those and then we will get to repotting them. And I'm super excited. They're gonna be fun to do. So I'm excited to do this. We are back. Let's go ahead and do the ring of fire next cause it's gorgeous. Look at that. I'm thinking we'll do this size pot. I feel like it's not too much larger. Plus I'm using my moss pole mix and it's very chunky and aerated. So it's going to help fill in the gaps without uh, having it sit too wet. So it's going to be perfect. So this is the 3.0 grow pole. This is the one that opens from the front. It's their newer one. I'm finding that I like these poles uh, better than stakes to add for support, like for smaller plants. Not necessarily smaller plants, but I don't know, some plants that like to climb that you, I feel like that if you accidentally let it get too dry, it'll be okay. I'll have a couple more plants to add to my moss pole collection now. That's so funny. So you just have to snap all these uh, snaps together. Okay, so we have our pole built and the bottom is the soil flaps here that bend down. And we're gonna use our five inch. So just make sure that when you're filling these, the soil comes to about here. So that's roughly to the third one. So I'll fill with moss like here up. But my note is only, my note is pretty small on this. So I'm only going to add a little bit of moss, maybe to like here. Um, and then this will be soil and then I can just add to it. Sometimes I like to add all the moss in there all at once. Sometimes I don't, I don't know. I guess it just depends on my mood. I'm just going to add some in this way. I'll build the other pole off camera for the pink princess because I know it gets to be kind of repetitive. I know I build these a lot on my channel, so. But if you don't know how to build them, I have a moss pole playlist that has me like starting plants on these. It just gets to be a lot of the same. Sometimes I get asked, like, how do I know which plant to do on what type of pole? Like, what I do on a wire versus what size? And I don't know, I tend to just go with how I think the plant is gonna grow. I mean, I could do these on a wire pole, um, but if you think about a wire pole, you're watering through the top, right? And so you have to fill it all the way up to the top in order to water it, like with the globe method and with the bottle method. And it's a lot of effort sometimes to keep poles moist. So that also plays a role and what makes my decision. And these particular plants like uh, pink princesses and stuff that don't necessarily need a type of like damp moss pole, you know, again, if the pole dries out, it's fine. It's, it's just gonna use it to anchor its roots on and in. It's uh, not gonna be detrimental to the plant or anything. And there's not a wrong way or a wrong pole, I mean, and that's the thing, like I, sometimes I start plants on a pole and I end up like wishing I had put it on a different pole. 
Uh, and that's okay. You can always change it down the road or let it grow up on a different pole or prop it to start over on a different pole. It's just all about what you like and kind of what you prefer. So this mix is different than the other one that I just used. This one is a lot more aerated. Do you see how chunky it is? This is a fresh batch of moss pole mix. Now, the only thing that I did differently was I subbed the Fox Farm for Cocoa Core and I added some like worm castings and vermiculite. There's other stuff in here to add a little bit of moisture, uh, but no Fox Farm. I actually just wanna see how this moss pole mix does without Fox Farm. All right, so we're gonna add, again, the soil flaps on the bottom. We're gonna add our mix in here. I need to get some more shovels because I only have the one black one that I keep rotating between all of my mixes. And yeah, I need to get some more soil scoopers. I just need to order a set off Amazon. So that's what it's looking like, like that. I'm going to set this off to the side in hopes that it doesn't fall. And since this is going on a pole, I want to pretty much get rid of this entire soil because we need uh, the mix not to stay wet. And how are we looking soil-wise? It's not terribly rooted or compacted, you see? But I do want to get rid of majority of this soil. So I just kind of gently massage, I just take my time with it. I usually just end up taking my finger and like going in there and kind of loosening it. You can use a little like tool to poke around in here. And then like shaking it, you can loosen it too. It's gonna be nice getting these plants out of the kitchen too. They've been sitting there for like a month. It's gonna be nice getting them in my plant room where it's warm and there's a lot more light. Now that's pretty good. You don't have to get everything off. I would say that's pretty good. You can see, make it out. The roots are, like you can see through them, a lot of that soil is gone. You don't have to rinse this or anything. Um, and it has a pretty decent root system, so I feel like that size pot will work well. We didn't really lose too much in there, so that is gone. And then we're going to plant this on our pole, but let me uh, change my camera battery really quick and I'll be right back. All right, friends, I am back. So we have our plant uncovered. And you just wanna look at where the plant is kind of growing. I'm gonna pull this little sheath off. And you can already see that this has gotten stuck. You see where it's bent? I'm gonna try and help this guy out a little bit. It's easier to see and the light, uh, that sheath is kind of wrapped around too tightly. I'm going to take my shears and kind of poke 
right in the middle out the other end. It kind of ripped the sheath. Uh, you just have to be really careful because you can damage the leaf that way. And I have broken many of leaves by doing this. Now stuck leaves are from dry air, low humidity. In this case, I think it was being underwatered. Uh, so I think that definitely contributed, but it's, it's very kinked. I think this actually might break, break off. Do you see? Which I'm kind of worried about. And you can see the new leaf uh, shoot right there, but it has some good color. It's like a pink, fiery pink right there. I'm hoping it'll heal. I'm going to be very gentle and not like try and damage that. But you just want to look at with the way your plant is growing. So I feel like this is going to be the back here. I'm just going to anchor this part up against the pole. Okay, we have our pole that we did. I'm going to put a little bit of soil down in here first. I'll do it over my basket. I'm gonna go ahead and add my Osmico in here. I'm just kind of roughly measuring like a teaspoon. So this is in the center, everything's centered. I'm gonna take our plant and you want to focus the node more than the root system because the root you can fix around the pole. I kind of tilt this back to get the bulk of the root system in here. Uh, but it's still centered. It just like gives you more room in the front to work with. And you're going to stick it down and then any of the excess roots just bring it around the back of the pole. Get them down far enough and around the back. And it's pretty much self-positioned itself. I'll use a little bit of an anchor just to anchor that like right there. And then, yeah, I pretty much got itself in the perfect position. So we're just gonna fill up. And you want to make sure to get um, it pressed down pretty good because when you're using a chunky mix, it leaves a lot of air pockets and you want to get these front roots covered pretty well. Oh, it's a loud plane. And then we're going to do that on this side over here as well. And press it down. That's the perlite crunching, <laughs> not the plant. A lot of these smaller leaves might end up just like yellowing and browning off because they're so close to the soil level. I actually don't need to anchor this plant on because 
I'm gonna risk damaging this new growth if I try to mess with this anymore. It's pretty much anchored right up against the pole. So as it climbs, I'll just make sure to anchor it better. And what's really nice about my moss pole mix is I can literally drown this plant with water and it's gonna drain straight through. Uh, depending on the environment though, this mix dries pretty quickly. If you do replicate my moss pole mix, just know that you're gonna to need to water sometimes twice a week depending on the environment. If it's really warm uh, and your plants tend to dry out normally, this is gonna make it dry out even uh, more quickly, so keep that in mind. So this is the beneficial fungi. It's just gonna help uh, the plant uptake nutrients, just kinda, I don't know, just add those beneficial microbes to the soil. Add a couple of tiny little scoops. Kind of shimmy that down in there. I like to water over these plastic bins. They're just like sterilite bins. They're not super expensive. I have like so many of these. I used to use them as storage and then um, like they had lids and everything, but now I just use it to water my plants over. And I can be super messy with this because this is super aerated. We're gonna give a very, very thorough water saturate. This mix isn't going to hold on to water as long as, long as the other DIY mix. Um, and I didn't wanna overwhelm the succulent, but this plant can definitely be watered very heavily in this mix. And then I'm just gonna saturate the moss some more too, just to get it, give it a thorough soak. But you see how quickly it drains. Ideally, I would love to put this in my cabinet, but I don't have any room right now, so I think I'm just gonna put it on my plant shelf. Uh, I think it will just appreciate just being in there. I have a little saucer. Look at how cute, it is adorable now. I seriously just love starting plants on a moss pole. I think this is one of my favorite stages is when they're small like this, they're so cute. And it's, then it looks adorable. Of course I love when they start growing, but at this stage, they're just so pretty. I feel like I could do this for a living like, uh, start plants on a moss pole for people. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just get so much joy of starting them like this. I don't know what it is. So again, I didn't anchor it down here or anything because that leaf is kinked. So I'm going to hopefully let it harden and straighten out. Hopefully it'll unfurl because it has this moisture now from the soil and the moss. So stinking cute. I'm really excited to have a ring of fire now. If this leaf does do okay, I, it does have some good color right there in the middle. So I'm excited to see that. So that is that one. So we're gonna do the pink princess next. And then I will show you where I'm gonna put these in my plant room. Alrighty, a last plant that we're gonna do is our pink princess. Ugh. Okay, 
I pre-made another thickly pull off camera, the exact same one that we did. So that is ready. And yeah, let's see what's going on. See all those nasty fungus gnats this thing collected? I haven't seen gnats in forever, you know, cause I use the nematodes now. It's a little wilty. I think it's probably a little dehydrated. I don't know what happened to this leaf here. Crusty. <laughs> uh, let's take this cash pot out. Oh, shoot. I think we're gonna go with the, I was debating between the six inch repot me, which I would rather save this one cause I think this is my last six inch and I wanna do a golden pothos on a wire pole. So I'm thinking I might do the thickly in this uh, pot. It's a similar size. I think they're technically still a six inch, but it's a different brand. Uh, I think I might use this one and save the repot me one. Take our gnat trap out. Don't know what happened with this leaf here. This leaf is like all crispy on part of it. Oh, I can just see the gnats. I wanna get rid of this leaf here. I'm gonna cut it off. I feel like it's a bad leaf. So that one is gone. I know this is a new leaf and it's wrong for me to cut it, but I'm going to, don't hate me. <laughs> I don't like that it's all green. It's gonna really bug me. This pink princess hasn't matured enough yet to grow from its own caterpill, but my other pink princess that I have growing is growing from its own caterpill. So you can't cut this leaf off at the tip because the growth point is coming out of the petiole. And until it matures, uh, it'll continue to do that. So when you cut a new leaf off, there's a little bump on the stem that's where a new growth is going to emerge. And on my other pink princess, it's just growing its own caterpillar and it's not growing out of a petiole. So when you cut this, you wanna cut above the bump where the new leaf is gonna emerge. So like anywhere above is fine, just like that. So I got rid of this leaf. And if you notice these spots, it almost looks like a burn or something. From what I know and from my experience, when this happens, it's not a burn, it's just bruising from where the leaf is stuck in the caterpillar because, you know, pink princess leaves tend to get stuck leaves quite often. So that's what I attribute it to. And so a new leaf is gonna come out of the stem there. I think I'm happy with the remaining leaves that are left. See, it's got this beautiful marbling on it. Isn't that beautiful? That half moon is gorgeous. It's got some good color. All right, let's get rid of this gnat infested soil. That's the one thing I don't like about Costa farm plants is just the excess of cocoa core. It, that literally just came falling right off and it's still very wet in the center. There may be some rot going on because uh, there is fungus gnats flying around and that tends to happen more so when there is rot. There is a root plug. Do you see? I like to remove the netting because again, it's harboring uh, too much moisture in there. Now I'm not saying roots can't go through because they can grow through the mesh, but both of these are plugs. You, the other one has the root plug as well. So not only are they intertwined in a very dense environment, they have plugs, which holds in moisture. So when this happens, I just kind of take my time. Since there are two and I want to leave the two, they should kind of pull right off because they are separate, but some of those roots may have gotten intertwined 
and the other plug, which might have happened, but it should just like pull right apart. And sometimes you just have to break roots. So I have two separate plugs now. I was just uh, taking a, a I'm gonna do a, a real video on root plugs now, but you see how dark it is? It's very dense, so much moisture. The netting, you just kind of peel, it peels right off. You're not really break, breaking that many roots. It's not hard to get the mesh off. It's just, this is what can cause rot on your plant because it sits so dense in the center. Especially for a pink princess, because I find them super susceptible to uh, rot. The roots actually look pretty healthy. There was a little bit of rot starting on one uh, strand, but it's pretty good. You don't have to worry about getting every speck of dirt off, you know, just as long as, oh, that one came right off. Just as long as you get that big clump in the middle broken up. So that's our new little root ball on that one. All right, same thing to this guy. had to take a clip of that. I feel like this is going to be a good a short video, a reel, because um, I just like educating and I don't like root plugs. And again, it's not really necessarily the mesh itself. It's the moisture that's contained inside because it's just pure wetness in there. Good thing I didn't water this plant, you know, because it appeared droopy. It, ap it appeared thirsty, right? Because the leaves were droopy. It, uh, the soil looked dry, you know, if you didn't know like how wet that soil was actually around the base, you, you would have watered it and definitely have overwatered this plant. Root plugs are just super risky and I'm just like pulling some rotted bits off there. There's not a lot of rot, just a little bit up around the base. It should be okay. So you have our two props. The roots are good, they're free, they're breathable. And I'm trying to think how I want to anchor these on the pole. It doesn't really, I feel like that's the front on that one. So I want the back to go, this part to go, where my finger is against the pole because there's actually a start of an aerial root right here. So that being the front, I think will be good. And then I'm just trying to like see which direction it wants to grow. And I think for this one, I think I will make that the front as well. So I'm gonna do this side by side in the actual pot. So I'll kind of do something like that, just kind of right next to each other so that they can grow up side by side. There's not really a right or wrong way. You can pretty much do it however you want. So that's our root system that we're working with combined. And I don't think it's gonna be too overwhelming because we're gonna have the pole in here and we're gonna use our moss pole mix again which is very aerated. So I feel like this size will be okay. I could definitely use a five inch 
Uh, but I don't, I don't think I have any more five inch at the moment. Let's fill the bottom of this with soil. It's a little bit later in the evening and uh, I hear an owl outside howling. I think it's heading towards 730, so it's getting a little bit darker out. Okay. All right, we're gonna add a little bit down in here. sprinkle a little bit of Michael Risley in here. Okay. Same thing. We're going to tilt this back and kind of place these guys right in the front. And just tuck the roots down and around. Okay, and then just fill up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm gonna rip this little leaf off because it's in the way. Oh, it looks so cute on the pole already. I have to pot up my other pink princess, the one that I, my pretty one that's really pink. It's in stratum, but I need to pot it up, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm gonna do it on a thickly pole like this. Um, but I love the pink princesses. It's a plant that I never really, I didn't really think I would like as much, but if you get one that is really beautiful, like really good color, I honestly adore these plants. I like it better than the strawberry shake for sure. Now I don't really have to worry about anchoring these to the pole that much right initially because there's not really any roots uh, to anchor it to the pole. You kind of like secure with Velcro if you want, but I'm just going to let it hang out in here without securing it. And then once it starts growing, I can get it closer to the pole. It's already starting to drain because it's so chunky. It 
Doesn't she look so good? The leaves will turn and face the light. They're a little backwards right now, but once they reposition themselves, uh, they'll look a lot better. I might spray them down one more time with some Castile soap just to clean off like any dust and stuff. All right, I'm gonna meet you in my plant room. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna stick these and then that'll be it for this video. I'll get this mess cleaned up and then I will keep you updated on these and how they're doing. I'm excited. I'm excited for them to grow. I hope this one does well. All right, we are in my plant room and let me show you where I put them. So I just hung the dolphins up there in the window. You can see my air plant is still moving. <laughs> Uh, right there. I think it's gonna do really well getting the light. Yeah, it's a little bit darker out because the sun is setting. The other ones I put over here, it's really hard to see because I have so many poles. I just don't really have enough space in here. So the ring of fire I put here. Take it down so you can see everything. That is going to go right here. Uh, for now, I might move it around. And then the pink princess I put here, right next to it. And the leaves should kind of face um, outward and upward. So this is the marble one. This is my one that was growing all pink that I chopped back. It's like a very dark pink princess compared to that one. Like, look at the difference. These leaves are beautiful on it. So that one is in soil. This is the one that is uh, very pink and beautiful. I had to unfortunately like chop it back. Uh, it had some raw issues, so it's regrowing in stratum. And this is the one that's mature that's growing out of its own caterpillar. You see, it's not like growing off of the petiole. It's just producing its own caterpillar, and it's still doing that with it being, you know, chopped. So. Yeah, I'm gonna get that potted up soon and put it on a pole. It's really hard to see those back there, but those are some of the props that I took off of her, the bottom part of her. Let me take this one out so you can see it in some better light. You can make that out. So pretty. And these are still in stratum as well rooting away. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. My battery's about to go out, so I have to make this quick. I will keep you updated on them, and if there's been any decline or new growth, I will definitely show you guys. So I appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, and I will talk to you guys later.